Welcome to our Kotlin multi-platform event. As developers, we all like sharing code. To have a single place to change when our business requirements change. That's the simple vision for Kotlin multi-platform. We're committed to creating a technology for sharing your code across all pieces of your application. The key difference of Kotlin multi-platform is that we're taking the interoperability with each platform seriously. It has to work natively on every platform it runs, so you can choose the right mix of common and platform-specific libraries. This vision is grand. As the first step, we are focusing on efforts to polish and stabilize all the technology for Kotlin multi-platform mobile. That is, sharing code between Android and iOS mobile applications. We are happy to announce that this part has reached beta, and it is on track to becoming stable. So what do we mean by beta? You see. The Kotlin multi-platform technology has been experimental for a long time, and we've been experimenting with it a lot. We were trying different approaches to memory management, to libraries, to project configuration, etc. Our early adopters have had a steep learning curve and had to change their code a lot while we were experimenting. The time for these experiments is over. We see that the concepts we have now are good. We have fixed the major complaint. We have updated the memory management approach to provide a consistent experience between Android and iOS targets. So now we have the right balance of being able to reuse your existing Kotlin code and being able to access platform-specific features. The beta still has leftovers to be implemented here and there. Delivering them is our priority to bring you the stable release. However, organization of code in a stable release of Kotlin multiplexer will be the same as we present in beta. Beta release is a great time to start learning and gradually adopting Kotlin multiplexer so that you already have hands on experience by the time it goes stable. Stay with us for more details on Kotlin multiplexer, what it can do for you, and what our future plans are. Please welcome Anastasia who will share some of our early adopters' stories. We all like sharing code because we all understand the value it brings. It provides consistent logic, reduces the number of bugs, and speeds up the development process. These well-known advantages are common to all cross-platform approaches. So today I want to focus on the special features of Kotlin Multiplatform that allow developers to maximize the benefits of sharing code. Here are just a few inspiring stories. Maintaining consistent logic across Android and iOS is an important reason for thinking about adopting a cross-platform approach for your application. It's usually quite easy to start building a brand new app on top of a modern cross-platform framework, but what if you already have a huge native code base, a well-established development process around it, not to mention a team specialized in working with a single platform? In that case, you usually don't want to redo everything from scratch just to avoid duplicating code. Instead, you may want to be able to integrate the cross-platform technology gradually, so you can start benefiting from sharing code without having to disrupt your processes. That is exactly what Baidu did. In this story, the team from Baidu describes how they started using multi-platform mobile by unifying some small functions with simple logic and how later they greatly increased the amount of shared code by unifying not only the low-level data and the processing logic, but also the UI processing logic. Hello, everyone. I'm Baidu's Yuan Guozheng. Now, I'll share some of Baidu's experience in the KMM tools. Baidu app has a lot of users. Its different tools have a complex business logic. For a 我们都保持着传统的原生应用开发模式，但随着各类功能模块复杂程度的不断提升，以及团队规模的增长 ，iOS 和安卓端的业务逻辑无法实现统一，造成的问题也源源不断的涌现出来。我们真正需要的是能够减少为不同平台编写和维护相同业务逻辑代码所花费的成本，但同时又能保证。原生应用开发的灵活性和优势的一种技术，最终我们选择了 KMM 技术。我们并没有急于将 KMM 技术
直接应用于任何一个业务模块上，而是在不断深入了解 KMM 技术的过程中，结合百度自身业务的特点，利用 KMM 提供的 Expect Actual 功能和一些优秀的开源框架，进行一系列的基础能力建设和接口统一化建设。除了 Cosmic 标准库和第三方开源框架已经提供的跨平台通用能力以外，通过 KMM 技术，让百度 App。日积月累的众多组件和各类能力也得以充分利用，无论是像多线程并发、网络请求、I/O 操作、数据库存储这样的底层能力，还是像账号统计、分享这样与百度自身业务紧密结合的基础业务能力，都能够利用同一套 Kotlin 代码，方便的进行调用，既避免了重复建设，也对后续开发和维护复杂多变的业务逻辑。提供了有力支持。近一年的时间里，我们在百度 App 及其矩阵产品中，先后开发并上线了多个使用 KMM 技术实现的功能，在保证 iOS 和安卓平台的数据模型、API 请求、JSON 解析、缓存等数据层业务逻辑统一和功能模块稳定运行的基础上，我们又逐步引入了 MVI 的开发模式，使得像列表数据、加载。和展示这样的 UI 控制逻辑，充分进行解耦，并实现双端对齐，有效的提升了开发效率，进一步降低了业务逻辑的维护成本。后续，我们还将继续扩大 KMM 技术的应用范围，充分发挥 KMM 技术在移动开发中的优势。在此，特别感谢 c o t o l i 团队在 KMM 技术上的所有贡献。伴随着 KMM Beta 版本的发布，让我们共同期待。Kotlin 跨平台技术发展的越来越好，谢谢。Of course, Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile is not the only way to share a specific piece of code. Many mobile teams use JavaScript to achieve the same thing. But as the complexity of the logic increases, this approach starts to negatively affect the app's performance. Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile allows you to maintain consistent logic while keeping the performance on the native level. Shared code written in Kotlin is compiled to JVM bytecode with Kotlin JVM and to native binaries with Kotlin native. That's why a lot of companies that already use JavaScript to share code between mobile platforms are migrating to Kotlin multi-platform mobile. One such company is Quizlet. At Quizlet, we're no strangers to the benefits of shared code. From 2015 to 2018, we had been sharing business logic for some core flows across Android, iOS, and the web. By embedding our web JavaScript code into our mobile apps and then wrapping them in our native UI, this allowed us to build our products quickly. But as we moved more and more computationally and structurally complex logic into JavaScript, we encountered many performance issues on mobile. In order to keep things running acceptably on Android, we even had to bundle an entire native JavaScript runtime into our app, almost doubling our previously lean bundle size. In 2018, we evaluated and made the jump to Kotlin multi-platform as quite early adopters, trusting it to power learning experiences for over 50 million users a month. Kotlin multi-platform has enabled us to keep developing our core product areas and shared code, along with velocity improvements. Kotlin multi-platform has also yielded a ton of performance wins compared to our previous approach. On Android, we experienced an average improvement of one and a half second. Faster app launch time due to the JavaScript engine finally being removed. 50 times faster performance when calling into the shared code due to being able to skip data serialization costs. Five times faster runtime of shared code itself compared to JavaScript, and 45% reductions in our Android bundle size once we were finally able to remove that pesky JavaScript runtime. On iOS, we had similar performance wins. In particular, we noticed that our logic to grade user responses performed 25 times faster than the same logic under JavaScript core. Being able to rely on Kotlin multi-platform has allowed us to quickly and reliably launch features for our users, and it's given us the best balance of developer experience, performance, and reliability out of all of the shared code strategies that we've tried over the years. Sharing code in user-facing applications is not the only way to work with Kotlin multi-platform mobile. You can also use it to develop a mobile SDK, just one library that can be integrated into many applications. The 
the API of your library will not be any different from an API of a regular mobile library, so developers won't need any special knowledge to integrate it. Unflow is a great example of this use case. They provide a mobile SDK that allows teams to create screens, flows, and features without a single line of code. Using Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile to build their cross-platform SDK allowed their small operation to deliver an exceptionally high-quality product without compromising on performance or native capabilities. In autumn 2021, we set out to build a next-generation CMS for mobile apps. Unflow allows non-technical team members to instantly publish screens and flows to their existing apps using our visual editor, no code required. Advanced user segmentation and A-B testing makes it the ideal tool for activation and engagement experimentation within mobile teams. Given our absurdly small product team that included a single mobile engineer with no native iOS experience, Kotlin Multiplatform became an obvious choice to build the first version of our in-app SDK. As a lean team, we knew that reducing our learning curve on iOS and sharing core business logic would significantly reduce the amount of time needed to ship our MVP. We managed to ship that first version to customers within a month. The intriguing part of Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile's unique approach to multi-platform development was the reliance on native UI. Given we were supporting crucial in-app experiences for customers, including onboarding carousels and MPS surveys, we were not willing to compromise on the UI performance trade-offs offered by other cross-platform solutions. Kotlin Multi-Platform allowed us to easily integrate a fully native experience that is simply not replicable with React Native or mobile web. Having not seen an SDK built with Kotlin Multi-Platform, we were working in uncharted territory. But thanks to the cross-compilation to native code under the hood, it was no different to building any other SDK. Given all the business logic was handled inside the Kotlin Multi-Platform module, there was no bottleneck to duplicate all the features we were building across multiple platforms. When we did add an iOS engineer to the team, Kotlin Multi-Platform made onboarding a breeze. Leveraging the API provided by the shared module, all of his time could be spent focusing on making the SDK really special at a UI level using interactions and animations. When it came time, contributing to the shared module was painless because the entire project lived within a single monorepo. By leveraging Kotlin Multiplatform from the very beginning, we estimate having saved ourselves nearly two months build time when releasing that first version. Our customers had support for both their Android and iOS apps from the beginning. Thanks to the XC framework generator, we were able to publish versions on CocoaPods, Swift Package Manager, as well as the Maven Central repository. There was no discernible difference, so developers didn't need any special knowledge to integrate on Flow. This unique approach to multi-platform development has meant that our small team can deliver an exceptionally high quality product without compromising on performance or native capabilities. Now, please welcome Dmitry, our technical lead, for a deeper dive into Kotlin multi-platform capabilities. Hello and welcome. So you have just heard a lot of wonderful features of Kotlin multi-platform mobile. So now you might be curious how we are able to deliver all of those features. And I will use this opportunity to give a quick overview of technical and design decisions way down in the foundation of Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile, which enable exactly those features. For that, let's take a look at the typical Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile application. What it consists of? Well, first of all, obviously there is a common code, a code which will be shared across Android and iOS and will be compiled to respective Android and iOS application. But what is more important is that there is more. There is also Android-specific part and iOS-specific part, which will be compiled only to Android and iOS app respectively. Not every Kotlin multi-platform mobile application might have those parts. As a very simplified example, maybe you are doing some mathematical calculations, so you don't need platform-specific logic. But the possibility is here, and this highlights the first very important property of Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile. It does not 
force you to make all your code common at once. You decide what you want to share and what you don't want to share. And this makes a perfect sense, because not everything can be shared even theoretically. And even if it can, then maybe there are other considerations like performance, UX, or maybe you are just in the process of migrating to multi-platform and you will move this logic to common, but just later. For the next very important property of Kotlin multi-platform mobile, let's take a look at how it is compiled to executable code. For Android side of things, it's pretty simple. The Kotlin code will be compiled to GVM byte code, and this is the same representation as native Android applications use. And it should come as no surprise, because let's be honest, most of them use Kotlin compiler anyways nowadays. And then this GVM byte code will be transformed to DEX and apported to Play Store or something else. But what about iOS? Well, it's much more interesting. Actually, Kotlin native compiler will transform Kotlin code to the so called LLVM IR, which stands for LLVM Intermediate Representation. And what is very curious, that this is the very same representation as Swift compiler uses. And actually, this LLVM IR will be then transformed to native executable binary using the very same toolchain as Swift applications use. And this brings us to the next very important property of Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. It uses the same representation as native applications do. This brings us a lot of challenges, but also a lot of features. And let's take a look at a few of them. So, first feature is pretty straightforward consequence of using the same representation as native apps. It allows us to move closer to native performance and binary size. Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile does not introduce any heavyweight abstractions like virtual machine, which would separate your code from the native layer. This already gives us a good head start, and we can actually see that even now, performance and binary size is very competitive with native applications, and in a lot of cases is on par with it. But what is important is that we haven't exhausted all of the optimizations possibilities, and we will be able to improve this even further in the future. The next feature enabled by using the same representation as native apps is top-notch interoperability. You can take your Kotlin multi-platform SDK and compile it to the same representation as native libraries use on Android or iOS side of things. And then you can plug it directly into your Android or iOS application and it will be completely seamless to it. So, you can use this, for example, to gradually and smoothly introduce multi-platform to your already existing application without impacting experience of your users. And also, interoperability works in the opposite direction as well. You can take existing native libraries for Android or iOS work and use them in Kotlin multi-platform mobile code. For iOS side of things, we will assist you with providing Kotlin bindings for C libraries out of the box and you can also use Cocoa Pods for dependencies management. Therefore, you can benefit and use rich existing native ecosystems without being constrained into existing Kotlin multi-platform libraries. So now you can see how these fundamental design choices already deliver us all those good features. But what I wanted to highlight and what is very important is that it also opens a lot of possibilities in the future and we will be able to deliver even more of them. And speaking about future, my colleague Anastasia will tell you more about it. Kotlin multi-platform mobile stabilization opens a lot of roads for our community. I am pretty sure that in the next couple of years, we'll hear more and more success stories from companies and see a lot of popular libraries migrating to multi-platform. And our team will do everything to support these efforts. Naturally, after beta, there will be a stable release. We are pretty confident that Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile will reach that milestone in the year 2023. But we don't want to stop there. For example, we have a lot of exciting ideas for library offers that go way beyond simple stabilization. And then, let's be honest, there is also cross-platform UI. Tricky topic, right? You might have heard of Kotlin Multiplatform as cross-platform without UI, or even cross-platform that denies that UI should be cross-platform. 
But Kotlin Multiplatform never was about limitations and dogmas. It was about freedom and flexibility. And we understand that for some users, having a state-of-the-art cross-platform UI framework is something that will give them that freedom. Freedom to quickly deliver a prototype, freedom to use their favorite language across all of their code base, freedom to create new and exciting things. Today, we are happy to announce that stabilizing Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile paved us a road at technical possibility for creating such a framework. To participate in Kotlin Multiplatform's future, start right now, it's a perfect time. We have updated Kotlin Multiplatform educational materials on our website. Look for links in the description to start learning Kotlin Multiplatform and explore what it can do for you. To finish, I would like to thank our community for making all that possible. Let's enjoy the Kotlin Multiplatform together.